Do you think there are opportunities now for Georgia companies in um, Saudi Arabia? Oh, now more than ever, without question. The uh, everyone talks about the the uh, development going on in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, in the Emirates in general, Bahrain, and places like that, which is uh, significant to say the least. Uh, you know, when you you hear statistics like uh, a quarter of the world's, you know, the, the, the high-rise construction cranes that you'll see out your window here, a quarter of all construction cranes on the planet are currently in Dubai. Now, you know, we'll, I've said that, and, but later on, I guarantee when you're home, you know, tonight sitting around, you're going to think about that and you go, geez, a quarter of all of the, you know, it'll hit you later on. It's a, it's a ridiculous. Particularly when you think of all the building going on in China. Without in question, China. without question. But that said, uh, the, the combined development going on in Dubai and Abu Dhabi now is only just a fraction of the new development going on inside the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, my, what my understanding is, is that at the beginning of the year, new development, uh, just new development, not redevelopment, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia topped one trillion U.S. They are <coughs> building what they're deeming as these uh, economic cities. First one being the King Abdullah economic city that will be uh, built, that is being built, uh, north of Jeddah. Jeddah is uh, on the west coast of, the, of Saudi Arabia. It's kind of like the Los Angeles versus the New York is over on the east side, the Dammam, where Aramco is. Uh, and then, of course, Riyadh is the capital in the middle. The e first economic city, uh, the King Abdullah economic city, is about 280 plus billion dollars, uh, having an economic zone in it, uh, a science and technology zone, a uh, educational zone, a financial zone, uh, uh, a resort, and uh, you know, uh, a residential zone, and then of course the economic city on the bottom. It's going to be just a, an incredible uh, undertaking. So that would in, uh, open doors for what sort of companies, for instance? Well, look around and and think, to, ask yourself a question: What does it take to build a city from scratch? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, felt, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> architects, supply, building supply, uh, contractors, uh, uh, plumbers, <laughs> electricians, uh, I mean, you name it. Uh, they're, 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 you have uh, uh, infrastructure, people who specialize in infrastructure, overways and underpasses and uh, residential construction. There, there'll be the number I heard uh, last on my last trip there, uh, three million new single-family homes in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. if, so, if a company wants to become involved and they've never gone to the Middle East, never you know, done any work outside of Georgia yes. even, what should they do? Well, uh, this, is a <coughs> this is good news. Good news is, is that the bad news is, is that Saudi Arabia has gone through a boon like this prior back in the 70s. And the, uh, it was a, they experienced tremendous growth but they didn't really have a, an economic development arm or division of the kingdom to, to, it was all who you knew or who you could get to or you might find a sponsor or find a prince or find somebody that would bring you in and you would expend a lot of money <coughs> uh, doing the preliminary stuff and uh, if, that, if you were a sponsor, quote unquote, was, uh, lost interest, well, you know, so goes, and you've just wasted a lot of money. Well, they, they have learned from that. Now they have a whole complete different system. Uh, there's a fellow by the name of uh, His Excellency Amar Dabach, and Amar is a, is a dear friend. He's a, he's a very, very bright guy, one of the brightest people I've met. And he uh, spent a great deal of time uh, over in Singapore looking at their economic development uh, efforts, which is pretty much you know, the model right now on the planet. And they've replicated a great deal of that. Of course, what works, some worked and some doesn't work for the kingdom. But uh, he has created, uh, at the direct, under the direction of the king, uh, an organization called SAHIA. And it's S-A-G-I-A, 
and that stands for simply the Saudi Arabian General Investment Authority. And so what they do is they uh, accept uh, an organization can get in touch with SAGIA and, and send a letter or, or email or telephone call and say, this is what we do. Uh, these are our capabilities. Uh, and this is what we would like to participate in, uh, or, it, or either if we don't, if we're not sure what we'd like to participate in, how do you see a fit for us, if at all, uh, in this new development happening in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia within these economic cities? And then what would happen is, is that the folks at SAGI would look at, uh, you know, Roosevelt Manufacturing and say, well, you know what, I think we have a good fit for Roosevelt Manufacturing, and they would either uh, introduce them to a project specifically or into a number of potential people uh, that are in a related business in Saudi Arabia to joint venture with because that makes it a lot easier and they handle all of the permitting and the licensing and and all of the technical stuff where before that was a a real hard thing to do now American companies can actually if you're gonna open a manufacturing plant you can own the land mm. and there are incentives there tremendous incentives for you to do so in areas uh, north of Jeddah, uh, in, a, in a, an industrial park uh, called Petro Rabah, which is a petrochemical uh, a refining industrial park, there's uh, Aramco has created a joint venture to, for the first time ever, to start refining downstream product, which is you know polymers, poly polyethylene, things of that nature that you know your carpet is made of, uh, your rubber-made products are made of, things of that nature. <coughs> Excuse me, and uh, and so now the the there is a tremendous opportunity for manufacturers to potentially uh, joint venture with uh, with uh, a, a, an organization existing over there to purchase land at about a buck and a half a square meter, uh, set up a manufacturing operation, literally buy your feedstock over the fence, which saves a tremendous amount of money. You have the reduced labor costs. You have uh, electricity for about two cents a kilowatt hour. You have cheap gas, cheap water. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, um, if you're thinking about, well, why, we, why wouldn't we do that in China? Well, guess what? The shipping time to, to Europe for your product from Saudi Arabia is about half the time at minimum from China. You know? And plus, you have all these incentives available now from the government to do so. Uh, and they're very motivated to find organizations that would love to expand, but due to uh, you know constraints here in the United States, unions, cost of uh, of, of uh, energy, uh, cost of land, all of those things that we know very well, uh, this might be an attractive opportunity for people to to pursue at this time. Do you think that the majority of Saudis are behind this economic uh, development? plan. Oh, without question. Because because what it will do in the long run is the in my opinion, one of the critical things that the kingdom has to do right now is create a middle class. It doesn't exist. Where we have, you know, lots of folks here, good solid families that that where guys go to work in the morning uh, in the service industries or with their names on their coats and, you know, things of that nature that that uh, are electricians or turn wrenches for a living or what have you and make a good living at it. That doesn't exist there. The folks that do that kind of work are typically expats from Pakistan, India, Malay. And so uh, what needs to happen is the, the, the country needs to create this middle class, this a working class. And so if you are one of these U.S. companies that has a desire to come over, if in your mix, in, in your proposal, you also say, uh, we don't just want to come in and build something and leave, but we'd like to set up a full-time operation. And we would like to, uh, as we move along, we'd like to hire Saudis and train them in these vocations. That will be, that's a big plus, a very big plus. Uh, and, uh, and, and now there seems to be more of a willingness among uh, Saudis to, to learn and take on these jobs and these vocations.